Hello everyone! So I'm still on a watercolor kick and I pulled out my new, to me, Stamping Bella Flower Garden stamp that I had shown in a haul video not too long ago. And I'm inking it up with Hero Arts black ink and then stamping it onto the smooth side of some Distress watercolor cardstock. And I was going to stamp it in the center at first but then decided to stamp it more off to the side. And then I'm going to tape it down to my cutting board. I've shown this in a couple of videos already. Um, and it will be linked with the rest of the supplies. Um, it's just an Epicurean one, so you can find them on Amazon. I got mine from Lee Valley here in Canada. And yeah, this one was like $12 because it's pretty small. And I like to use this one because one, it keeps everything from warping. And two, it's heat resistant. So just using regular old painter's tape to tape everything down. Um, this is actually previously used painter's tape. I just um, stick it to the side of my desk or wherever to grab until it gets too torn up or like dirty to keep using. <laughs> and yes, Caitlin's in her playpen behind me and wants to make sure everyone can hear her. <laughs> so once I've got everything taped down, I made sure to kind of do it fairly straight because I plan on using that as a border or as a guide. And I'm using my distress markers this time to watercolor since it's been a while since I've used them and I've been wanting to play around more with watercoloring with them. So I'm starting off with some squeezed lemonade and just coloring it along the very edge of the petals and then using a damp brush. It's not soaking wet, just kind of damp. I'm just kind of pulling the color a little bit more towards the center of the petals. Um, nothing too fancy or technical. I just kind of want to get the color down and then soften it a little bit so you don't see like harsh marker lines. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to go on and do um, the stems and the leaves just so I can let the kind of flower area dry before I add my next color. And for the stems and leaves, I'm using peeled paint and mowed lawn markers. So I add the mowed lawn first, not being super particular with any of it. That's one thing with an image like this. It's so easy to color because it's quite forgiving with like the scribbly nature of it. So yeah, you can just easily scribble a color on and not have to worry about it too much. So I'm adding both colors at the same time just for convenience and then they'll just kind of blend themselves together. And yeah, just picking up my little paintbrush that I get wet with a little bit of clean water and then just pulling the color to the center of the leaves and along the stems to soften it. And then using my heat tool to dry everything. So that's where the like, heat resistant cutting board comes into play. <laughs> So once it's all dry, I'm going in with picked raspberry and coloring this towards all the center of the petals. And I'm just working on one flower, well, the biggest flower first here and not adding any other color. Just because I want to watercolor that out before the marker soaks into the cardstock too deeply and you're left with a lot of marker lines. So this time I'm working with a little bit wetter of a brush to pull out the marker color and to kind of start blending it with the yellow. And then I took festive berries and I'm just scribbling it on an acrylic block and picking up a bit of the color with the brush and just dabbing it right in the very kind of center bottom area of the petals. And since it's all still wet, it's just going to kind of blend itself together. And then I decided to add a little bit more squeeze lemonade. So I did the same thing. I just scribbled it onto the acrylic block and picked it up with the paintbrush and then kind of just deepened all the edges there and let everything kind of blend and do its own thing. Um, yeah, with these you can kind of do whatever you want. They blend themselves, they work really easily, and yeah, it's watercolor. It's kind of fun to experiment with and just let things kind of do their own thing. Even though I'm very OCD, I still struggle with that. <laughs> but yeah, once I did the largest one, I went on and did the rest of the flowers, the exact same method, just coloring the picked raspberry, blending it out, adding a bit of the festive berries and the squeezed lemonade and then made sure everything was really dry. And then I decided I was only, I'm gonna cut this down and I wanted it to be a narrower panel. So I grabbed another piece of the painter's tape and taped that down so that I'll have a smaller area to work with. And then I grabbed my two little Distress Ink Cubes. I've got um, Broken China and Salty Ocean. You could use the markers for this, but I wanted more color. And using the little, the actual Distress inks, you get a lot more color. So I squ uh, smoosh them right onto my acrylic block there. And then I'm adding a whole bunch of clean water just to get everything ready to do a wash with. So watering it down a lot, so then I've got a lot of extra color here. So that's where it's nicer to have, I guess, the ink pads than using the markers. But whatever works for you. 
And then I'm just taking my brush with just clean water again and dampening all of the outside area around these flowers. And then just picking up the color and applying it. So by working on the damp cardstock, everything can kind of be a bit smoother and blend together. Um, it's again something I kind of need to experiment with a bit more and practice just because I have a harder time you know, connecting all the areas and still working all together while it's wet without, you know, leaving the marks and the lines or I think they call them blooms. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm just picking up both colors kind of at the same time here and there. So you don't really notice that I use two colors, but once I've got that whole wash down, I'm going to dry it again. And then I wanted to kind of add a little something. So that's one of the cool things about distress markers is they reactivate with water. So I'm just picking up clean water on my paintbrush and just flicking the paintbrush to get little droplets of water all over the image. Like you can't see it right now, but you'll be able to see what it does in a minute. So I just keep doing it and then this is where my OCD comes into play. I'm selectively placing droplets in areas where I want them as well. <laughs> so you can kind of see it a little bit better there because the paintbrush is picking up some of the color off of um, the watercolor there. But once that is dry, as you're going to see here, it just gives it a cool look. So something different. So once everything is completely dry, I can now start peeling off the tape. And yeah, no residue came off. These are again, older pieces of tape that had previous residue, but you just want to be careful when you peel it off. It's really rare that I end up tearing cardstock with it. And yeah, I just keep reusing the same pieces of tape over and over again until yeah, they're too dirty or they're no longer sticky. So I just set those aside. And then I'm going to go on to the rest of my card. So I'm going to trim down um, this watercolor piece just using my paper trimmer. Um, I always eyeball when I trim. I don't measure anything. I just, yeah, stick it in my trimmer and go. I know for some people it's really difficult to eyeball things. There's tools for that. Like there's the perfect layers tools and, um, you know, the T-square rulers, different things like that. But when it comes to trimming um, layers and this kind of thing, I literally just eyeball it. So I decided I wanted to frame the watercolor piece with um, some black cardstock. So yeah, just eyeballing it again, using it in my paper trimmer and trimming it down. And then the pattern paper I'm using is from the Basic Gray Highline pack that I am loving. <laughs> and yeah, Caitlin is now sitting in my lap, FYI, because she was not happy with being in her playpen while I'm doing fun things on the computer. So <laughs> um, I grabbed a sentiment from my Great Greetings set and I'm inking it up with some Brilliance Graphite Black Ink and I'm going to stamp that onto this piece of lightweight vellum that I use my powder tool on. I use it quite vigorously because I want to remove every little bit of static and I purposely am stamping with a black pigment ink because I want um, I'm going to emboss it here with black embossing powder. So if I miss any spots with the embossing powder, the ink kind of helps cover that. You could use Racermark, but when I'm actually using black embossing powder, I like to stamp it with black ink. So got that done and then melted with my heat tool again. So super quick and easy. And then I'm going to trim it down to a narrower um, piece of vellum. And then there is a little companion stamp for this. So I'm grabbing another pattern paper from the pack. And you can see I used it on um, those happy birthday balloon cards that I posted a few videos ago. <laughs> so I'm inking out the stamp and using my stamp positioner again. This time I'm just using the Hero Arts black ink because it dries faster and I'm not embossing this little tiny bit. And I messed up with my first attempt. I shifted everything just slightly and kind of smeared it. So just turn the card sock and do it again. <laughs> so the second time was a win so I trim it down again with my paper trimmer just a thin narrow little strip and I originally was gonna sew these onto my card but then I decided not to go with that and I'm just gonna fold it over. So I'm gonna adhere everything together first using my ATG adhesive. So I get all the adhesive lined up I'm gonna add another little piece of this green pattern paper from the same pack and then adhere my main image there over it. And then the vellum, I'm just going to fold it over and tape it um, to the back of the card using just standard um, tape, like the acid-free scotch tape. I buy it in bulk at Costco, so I have literally a lifetime supply of this stuff. So just tape it down to hold it in place. And then I did the same thing with the little strip of pattern paper there that I had stamped. So fold it over and taped it down. And then I grabbed this um, black... Um, cord that I had got recently and wrapped that around as well and tied it in a bow and trimmed it down and then I kind of 
trimmed off some of the extra little fuzzies because it was a little too fuzzy for this card in my opinion so just quickly trimmed them with my scissors and then it was good to go and I'm going to apply some more adhesive and adhere that yeah. to my card which is um, my favorite things this is the sweet tooth cardstock and now I'm going to go and do the inside of the card and I kind of had this idea in my head so I took the picked raspberry marker and just inked up um, all the flowers of that same stamp and then I used mowed lawn I'm going to stamp that on the inside of my card, but I did not like how this turned out. It just, the flowers were way too light. I'd let them sit for too long. So I should have like sprayed the um, stamp really lightly with water. It would have been probably perfect. But since I'd already adhered everything and I didn't want to like redo the card, like the card base, I picked up my paintbrush and kind of softened everything. And I still wasn't happy with it because the blooms were way too light. So what I did was I just scribbled the marker onto an acrylic block and picked that up with my barely damp watercolor brush again. Um, with this you can't do any blending. As soon as it goes down it's done for because it's cardstock, it's not watercolor paper, so it'll pill really bad if you get it too wet. But I was happy with it, it worked. <laughs> so as always there'll be a link below to my blog post with links to all the supplies used and I will see you guys next time. Bye!